Some might say it's serendipitous, others might believe it's art imitating life, but fact is that both Israel and the Palestinian Authority chose as their representative to the Oscars this year a movie based on the same story about the relationship between a Palestinian collaborator and his Israeli operator at the intelligence services. When the Academy published its shortlist of movies for the foreign language category, they chose to advance the Palestinian movie Omar and not the Israeli one Bethlehem. So just before the Oscar nominations are announced this week, we wanted to find out from movie critics from the Israeli and Palestinian side how come the Palestinian movie resonated better with the Academy members. Alon Garbuz, who manages the Tel Aviv Cinematheque, says it was very natural for him to screen Omar in his facilities. It's not the first time we are showing Ani Abu Asad film. We had uh, some years ago, the Paradise Now, that was a commercial success. And now Omar is the same story. Like Bethlehem. So Bethlehem was in our uh, neighbor cinema lab and we took uh, Omar. We will not uh, become rich from this film, but uh, I, I feel good with this film. The culture and lifestyle editor at the Times of Israel, Jessica Steinberg, explains that how the story is told is what makes each of the two movies unique. Bethlehem is a story about a, uh, a Shin Bet fixer, so to speak, and his collaborator who he has brought up, let's say, from, from youth and the relationship between them and feels very close to him and, and feels very emotional about him, which is what ultimately T really takes him down a certain path in the movie. And the story that unfolds, which of course is in some ways more Israeli because the main character is a Jewish Israeli, whereas the other characters are Palestinians. From the same perspective, Omar is um, essentially 100 percent Palestinian, but of course there are some Israeli Jewish characters as well. And the story is about Omar, who is being groomed to, but he, they are trying to groom him to become a collaborator. But there's also this love story that he's having on the side. Again, personal issues, personal problems, and two directors looking at it from their perspectives, Israeli and Arab. <laughs> Tamer Nafal, who writes about movies for Qaeda, the Arab culture website, believes that it is easy to play the game of the Israeli movie versus the Palestinian one, but at the end of the day, it's about the art of filmmaking, and the Academy seems to like how Hani Abu Assad makes movies. In a way, of course, I will believe that Hollywood is, you know, like, it's a politic game. But I think they picked Hani for the second time, because I think he's bringing layers. That, that is the most, it's not both black and white. You know, there are many, many artists who are blessed with the talent to find the balance in between uh, uh, being artist, an artist, being uh, a guy with a message, and at the same time entertain. Omar, yeah, it can be easily be done about three black African-American from Brooklyn, about the police, or about Rio de Janeiro, about, or al Bataniya, Egypt. The way he done it, he's, he's finding an international language, but yet he's representing a, a local problem. The common theme of the, the, between the both films is the collaborators. But Hani's movie, it's not looking at it as black and white, snitch and a patriot. A, a patriot. But he's really breaking the layers and he's showing you that the problem is not the collaborators, the collaborators, but the occupation that it's leading them. Garbuz admits he was quite surprised when he saw two movies were made on the same article published in Haaretz newspaper a few years ago. Both movies are based on the same story that was published some years ago in Haaretz newspaper and they, everybody were impressed in a different way. Beit Lechem is a little bit balanced, so uh, Omar is uh, telling you the truth in your face. Steinberg tries to explain why the Academy decided to favor Omar over Bethlehem. I would say that um, Omar, a love story can often, you know, it sort of grabs you. And there, there are very beautiful young people in Omar, and, and that is something that really moves that movie forward a lot. For me to walk out of this movie and feel sympathy with that uh, collaborator, I think that's genius. That's genius when you give, uh, when you, when you put lights on on uh, and you break stereotypes. I think it is very important, very necessary. I believe that the gate is open for us to believe of 
not just seeking for things, but just doing it. And, um, you know, I, I truly appreciate Hani for what he did. So what are the chances of a movie from Israel or the Palestinian Authority winning an Oscar? I would say that generally the films that come out of this region do not end up winning the Oscar. It could happen one day. I don't think. I mean, you could say that, yes, eventually it'll be a film about the situation that will win that foreign film Oscar. Or you can say it'll be something completely different, light, easy, not ne about people and not necessarily about politics. So my guess is as good as anyone's. Israel has been nominated 10 times for the foreign language Oscars over the years, but has never won. If chosen, this would be the Palestinian Authority's second Oscar nomination, with both movies directed by Nazareth-born Hani Abu Assad, who has lived in the Netherlands since the early 1980s. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson in Tel Aviv.